nature on the hoof, by Paul Murdoch. Part two, a thousand tiny heartbeats. So, welcome to another edition of Nature on the Hoof, a wee slice of life in and around the Vale of Leaven. As usual, I'll be walking and shooting wildlife, with a camera of course, but this time I'll be looking down rather than up. I won't go too far down into the soil itself because I'd have to put my number up quite a bit if I did that. In a mere square metre of soil, you can find as much as a trillion bacteria, a billion protozoa, single-celled living organisms, five million nematodes, tiny worms, about 100,000 mites, 50,000 springtails, 10,000 rotifers, uh, which are microscopic wheel animals that live in the film of water that surrounds soil, and the same number of tardigrades, known as water bears or moss piglets. They are also microscopic water dwellers, but with eight legs. What a great name for a band, by the way. The Moss Piglets. Huh. Anyway, I'll stick to the things I can capture with a macro lens, not a microscope. There will still be about 5,000 insects, myriapods, spiders and diplurins. That's blind, two-pronged bristle tails in that square metre. And an additional 100 slugs, snails and earthworms or so. And maybe even a mole or a vole or a shrew. But let me be even more specific, or we could do a whole BBC Nature series and just that, which, come to think of it, might not be a bad idea. Anyway, I'm going to concentrate on two little guys, one found in Cuckoo Spit, and the other, well, more of an adventurer, who hitches rides in bumblebees. Let's start with Cuckoo Spit. Have you ever seen that little clump of bubbles in a blade of grass It looks a bit like somebody has just, well, you know, gobbed in the ground? Well, inside that cluster of white foam, there's a little insect. It's a larval stage or nymph of the frog hopper. The one I found literally in my back garden is the meadow frog hopper. The tiny yellow nymph has produced this mass of wet bubbles around it to keep it moist and hide it from predators. Ingenious. Under its protective shield, it feeds on the juices of the grass using its rostrum, which is a kind of tubular mouth part. That's common to all members of its animal order, the Hemiptera. Other members of that order include aphids, shield bugs, and I'm afraid to say, bed bugs. The soft frog hopper larva will eventually develop wings and become a more robust little thing before flying off to pastures new. The other little creatures I want to talk about are bumblebee mites. Very difficult to photograph because of their tiny size and the speed of their carriers. I found this one when I rescued a drowning bumblebee from our pond. Clinging on for dear life, this orange mite was hanging on to a wingtip, just like the last passenger of the Titanic. These mites use bumblebees like buses. They move from flower to flower on the backs of their winged chariots, spreading their species all over the garden, and even journeying into the, the bumblebee hives. They can get onto a bumblebee pretty quickly, in about three seconds in fact. They can't afford to muck about. Then they're off, and as I said, sometimes go right into the hive itself. The bumblebees tend to nest underground in burrows where 100 and 150 or so of them tend to queen in their young. They don't do any harm to the colony, mainly feeding on discarded bits of wax, detritus and rubbish that litters the hive. They only become a problem when too many try to hitch a ride at the same time and restrict the bumblebees' flying capabilities. A world within a world, or what? The third picture in this particular set reminds me of some sci-fi landscape, but it's actually the pollen producing stamens of a rhododendron. The plant obviously depends on creatures like bumblebees to spread its pollen from flower to flower, but there's a twist in the tail here. The rhododendron nectar, the reward that tempts the bees onto the flower in the first place, is toxic, and it seems that only bumblebees are unaffected. Well, I say that, but there's some evidence that the nectar makes bumblebees quite keen on lots of repeat visits to the rhododendron flowers, which is probably a good thing for the rhododendron. Normally, honeybees and even minor bees will be killed by the nectar. It's as if the plant has decided which species of bee it wants. As a wee aside, this poison, a bit like caffeine in structure, was used as one of the world's first ever biological warfare agents. When the Romans were invading what is now Turkey, King Mercidates, the sixth of Pontus, I believe he was, um, an early experimentalist in natural poisons, 
Uh, we put some toxic honeycombs from the hives of resistant bees that had been foraging on rhododendron along the roadside in advance of the invading army of Pompey the Great. This was back in 65 BCE. The Roman garrison, not recognising the danger, enthusiastically scoffed a lot and unwittingly poisoned themselves in the process. Stupefied by the toxin in the honey, the Romans were slaughtered by the army of Mithridates VI, who were all lying in wait. The fourth picture is of a grey sailor beetle. The soldier beetle, a close relative, got its name after early entomologists decided that its reddish wing covers reminded them of the British redcoats. So I reckon the sailor beetles were named in a similar way due to their more navy-like attire. Both species feed on insect lava, aphids and stuff, but also take nectar and pollen, so you'll often find them around your flowers. The last picture in this set is of a tree bumblebee feeding on rhododendron nectar. So a bit of a link to the other stories. Tree bumblebees are really quick at going from flower to flower. Probably less than three seconds, so I didn't see as many mites in them. And they're a nightmare to focus in on. I only really caught the antenna sharply in this picture, but I love it all the same, as a kind of fairy-like quality. For all those close-up shots, I used my Raynox DCR250 macro attachment lens. That's about 70 quid or so, and it clips onto your camera in seconds. I generally use Flash 2 to sharpen the shots up a wee bit. So, I hope you enjoyed your wee uh, nature on the hoof. And remember, you can get all the pictures um, on my website, paulmurdoch.co.uk, and just hit the Nature on the Hoof tab, and you can follow the, the podcast, basically, and see the pictures at the same time. So until next time, stay safe and uh, keep well, and ciao for now.